Both countries will land to the Greeks, but they will land plus a margin. Dominic Strauss Kahn and Judicial Matters. Dominic Strauss Kahn, known as DSK, is the former managing director of the International Monetary Fund, IMF. He is known throughout the world for having been an influential member of French politics and government on several occasions. His popularity has been further enhanced by the multiple scandals in which he has been regularly implicated. In most of these scandals, Dominic Strauss-Kahn has the knack of always coming out of them as clean as a whistle, as they are often deemed unfounded or labeled as conspiracies. In any case, as the old saying goes, there's never smoke without fire. So, dear friends, make yourselves comfortable because today, we're taking you into the world of DSK's legal affairs and scandals. But before we get to the heart of the matter, let's take a look at Dominic Strauss-Kahn's biography. Who is he, really? Dominic Strauss-Kahn, or DSK, is a French economist, politician, and senior international civil servant. He was born on April 25, 1949 in Neuilly, Sioux, Seine, France. He completed his secondary education in Monaco at the Lycée Albert, Ayer, and in Paris at the Lycée Carnot, where he obtained his baccalaureate in 1966. In 1968, he passed the entrance exam to the École de Haute Etude Commercial in Paris, where he obtained his bachelor's degree in 1971. He entered the Institut des Etudes Politiques and obtained a degree in public law in 1972, followed by a doctorate in economics from the University of Paris X in 1975. He has had a rich and varied family life. Strauss Kahn has been married four times and had five children. He married Helen Dumas in 1967, Brigitte Guillemet in 1986, Anne Sinclair in 1991, and Miriam Law Offey in 2017. He has also enjoyed a busy and highly diversified professional career in which politics, governance, and teaching are intertwined. He began by teaching economics at various institutions, including the University of Nancy, then Nantere, ENA, and IEP in Paris. He began his political career by joining the Socialist Party in 1976. In 1981, he became an advisor to Lionel Jospin, and in 1988 was elected deputy for Savoy then deputy for the 8th constituency of Val d'Oise. He also held a number of ministerial posts, including Minister of Industry and Foreign Trade from 1991 to 1993 in the Edith Cresson and Pierre Berigovoy governments. He was then appointed Minister of the Economy, Finance and Industry in Lionel Jospin's government from 1997 to 1997 to 1999, a position that helped him gain enormous popularity. He ran as France's candidate for the head of the International Monetary Fund, IMF. On November 1, 2007, DSK was elected to head this global institution for a five-year term. However, he was unable to carry out this mandate to the end because four years after taking office, he became embroiled in an affair that forced him to resign from his position as managing director of the IMF. Now that we know who DSK is, Let's get to the heart of the matter and discover the scandals that have marked his life. 1. The MNEF, or Mutuelle Nationale des Etudiens de France case, in this case, which arose in 1999, Dominic is being prosecuted for forgery and use of forgeries. The questions relate to his role as a consultant in negotiating the entry of Compagnie Generale des EO into a holding company of Mutuelle Nationale des Etudiens de France at a time when he was working as a business lawyer T'es concerné puisque votre nom a été cité. Bah, moi, j'ai effectivement utilisé les services de cette agence de publicité. Je peux pas en dire plus. Maintenant, est-ce qu'ils avaient le monopole ou pas des actions de communication de la NEF Je, je n'en sais rien. Mais pour moi, ils ont fait un bon travail. Et il y a d'autres noms de dirigeants socialistes qui sont cités. Vous êtes euh, au courant Tout le monde. Euh... 
écoute, on lit la presse, on voit qu'il y a un sujet. Euh, je pense que s'il y a des questions que la justice doit traiter, elle les traite. In this capacity, he received 603,000 French francs from the Student Mutual in February 1997. The judicial authorities suspect a case of false invoicing to cover up fictitious employment. The judicial police had established that the sheet of paper on which the invoice Dominic had sent to the Mutual Aid Nationale des Etudiens de France for his services was written actually came from a ream of paper manufactured at a later date than that mentioned on the invoice. He was accused of producing a false invoice. During questioning, Dominic admitted to having backdated the invoice but said he had no criminal intent. He was indicted on December 15, 1999, but acquitted by the Paris Criminal Court on November 7, 2001. Little did DSK know, however, that this affair was only the beginning of a long series of legal troubles, and less than two years later, a second case was on the horizon. 2. The Mary Cassette case, a French politico-financial affair in which Dominic Strauss-Kahn is also implicated. In this case, which broke in 2000, Jean-Claude Mary, a financier for the Rassemblement pour la République, or RPR, recorded a video confession in which he details the RPR's hidden financing system. In it, Mary asserts that several political figures, including Jacques Chirac, were aware of these practices. Having learned of the existence of this tape after Jean-Claude Mary's death, DSK, then Minister of the Economy, allegedly attempted to use bribery to recover it. When the affair was made public, it provoked a huge reaction and scandal. It also reopened the debate on the financing of political parties in France. Dominic Strauss-Kahn was once again implicated. He has admitted possessing the tape, but said he had never looked at it and had even misplaced it. Je comprends que les gens trouvent bizarre que parce qu'on me remet une cassette, je me précipite pas pour regarder ce qu'il peut y avoir de croustillant dedans. Ça, oui, c'est ça qui est assez peu crédible. Hein, je le comprends. Reconnaître. Sauf que. Les HM de Paris, ça m'a jamais intéressé. On en parlait beaucoup à l'époque. J'ai pas pensé que cette cassette était si importante que ça, et donc je ne m'en suis pas préoccupé. On May 23, 2001, the financial section of the Paris Public Prosecutor's Office requested that the case be referred to the Court of Justice of the Republic to investigate possible acts of passive corruption and concussion, while a report by the Paris Public Prosecutor Jean Pierre Dintelhock indicated that there were strong presumptions of acts of passive corruption against the former minister. Finally, on June 28, 2001, Jean-Francois Bergelin, the public prosecutor at the Cour de Cassation, decided not to refer the case to the Cour de Justice de la République, considering that, as it stood, there was insufficient evidence to justify referring the matter to the Cour de Justice de la République on the grounds of bribery. DSK didn't even have time to get to grips with the affair before a third scandal came knocking at his door. Three. The case of suspicions of fictitious employment of his secretary at ELF. It's another affair that weighed heavily on politician Dominic Strauss-Kahn between January 2000 and October 2000 and October 2001. The facts date back to the period from 1993 to 1994, when Dominic Strauss-Kahn allegedly found a fictitious job in a Swiss subsidiary of the oil group ELF Aquitaine, for the benefit of his secretary Evelyn Duval, for a total amount of 192,000 francs. In January 2000, he was charged with complicity by instruction and concealment of misuse of corporate assets. However, investigating magistrate Eva Jolie dismissed the case on October 2, 2001. Seven years later, while DSK was enjoying the happiness and tranquility of a scandal-free life, a fourth affair was unleashed. Four. The Piroskanagi case, the affair dates back to 2008, when Dominique was managing director of the International Monetary Fund. He allegedly had an extramarital affair with one of his staff members at this international institution by the name of Piroska Nagy. Piroska Nagy, a Hungarian economist and former head of the fund's Africa division, confirmed that she had briefly been the Frenchman's mistress. However, in a letter written to the team of lawyers investigating whether DSK had used his influence to seduce the young woman. Nagi had used strong words against her former lover. She wrote, Whether I accepted or refused, I felt like a loser. Mr. Strauss-Kahn has abused his position, and I fear that this man has a problem that perhaps makes him unsuitable to lead an international organization where women work. Dominic Strauss-Kahn therefore publicly apologized to his wife Anne Sinclair 
as well as to the staff of the International Monetary Fund for having made an error of judgment in having had this affair. On October 25, 2008, he was exonerated by the International Monetary Fund's investigation, but the Dean of the Board of Directors stressed that his actions were regrettable and reflect a serious error of judgment. It was following this affair on May 6, 2011, that harassment became grounds for dismissal at the IMF. Three years later, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was caught up in a fifth scandal that would ultimately destroy his political career. 5. The Sofitel Affair in New York Dominic Strauss-Kahn was accused of sexual assault, attempted rape, sexual abuse, and unlawful confinement in a suite at the Sofitel Hotel in New York on May 14, 2011, by Nafisatu Diallo, the complainant. He was arrested at New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport shortly before the takeoff of Air France Flight AF-23 to Paris. On May 16, New York City criminal court judge Melissa Corot Jackson served him with the seven charges against him, denied him bail and remanded him to Rikers Island Prison, a facility for high-risk inmates. After spending three nights in prison, Dominic appeared again and his lawyers finally succeeded in obtaining his release on bail under house arrest with an electronic bracelet. It's a colossal bail of $1 million and $5 million guaranteed so that he can't leave the country. On May 20th, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was transferred from Rikers Island Prison to an apartment at 71 Broadway, where he was placed under house arrest with an electronic bracelet. His reputation was severely tarnished. His popularity declined. He is stripped of his position as managing director of the International Monetary Fund, and his candidacy for the 2012 French presidential elections is compromised. At the official arraignment on June 6, Dominic Strauss-Kahn pleads not guilty. The case took another turn, as the prosecutor later reported that Nafisa Tu Diallo had lied to investigators on a series of subjects concerning her past, the circumstances of the events and her current relationships. These elements cast doubt on the credibility of the plaintiff and her accusations. As a result, on July 1, 2011, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was released on parole. On August 25th, after more than three months of trial, Judge Michael Obus decided to drop the criminal charges following the advice of the prosecutor, who the day before had recommended in a motion to dismiss the case that the charges be dropped arguing that it was not possible to give credence to Nafisau Diallo's version of events. On the same day, Dominic left New York accompanied by his wife, Anne Sinclair, and one of his daughters. Civil proceedings concerning the case were launched on August 8, 2011. Nafisatu Diallo claimed violent and sadistic attack, humiliating and degrading behavior, attack on her dignity as a woman. On May 14, 2012, exactly one year after his arrest in New York, Dominique Strauss-Kahn filed a complaint against Nafisatu Diallo for unfounded accusations and defamation. On December 10, the case against Dominic Strauss-Kahn was dropped in exchange for a payment of $1.5 million to Nafisatu Diallo. The case ends without Dominic Strauss-Kahn having to explain to the courts what happened in Suite 2806 of the Sofitel on May 14, 2011. In an interview on TF1's 8 o'clock news on September 18, 2011, e, he admits to having had an inappropriate relationship with Nafisa Tu Diallo, calling it a moral fault, but denies any coercion or assault. Ce qui s'est passé ne comprend ni violence, ni contrainte, ni agression, ni aucun acte délictueux. C'est le procureur qui le dit, ce n'est pas moi. Even before the affair came to an end, a new complaint was lodged against DSK on a similar charge. 6. The Tristan Bannon Case This is a case that weighs on the French businessman for attempted rape. On July 5, 2011, Tristan Bannon filed a complaint against Dominic Strauss-Kahn for an alleged attempted rape in February 2003. This complaint came shortly after the Sofidal Affair in New York, the case was dismissed on October 13, 2011 by the Paris Public Prosecutor's Office for lack of sufficient evidence. However, the Public Prosecutor's Office considers that Dominic Strauss-Kahn has admitted to acts that could be qualified as sexual assault. His lawyers denied that their client had committed a sexual assault and made public his statements to the police, in which he claimed that he had only tried to kiss Tristan Bannon, 
and that he had let her go after she had pushed him away. As the statute of limitations for the offense of sexual assault had expired, the public prosecutor's office dismissed the complaint. Thinking it was all over, DSK once again faced the police for a seventh scandal. 7. The Carlton Affair This is a pimping case that took place in Lille in February 2012. In this case, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was questioned by French police as part of an investigation into a prostitution ring, as his name had been mentioned by several protagonists in the case. He was indicted on March 26, 2012 in Lille for aggravated pimping in an organized gang, but was granted bail. Although the Lille Public Prosecutor's Office had requested a total dismissal of the case, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was referred to the Lille Correctional Court for aggravated procuring as part of a group. Following hearings held from February 2nd to 20th, 2015 at the Lille Correctional Court, Dominic Strauss-Kahn was acquitted on June 12, 2015. These multiple court cases had serious consequences for Dominic's professional career, as he was sidelined from government and political affairs and turned to the private sector. Here's an overview of the various legal scandals in which businessman Dominic Strauss-Kahn has often been involved in. Having embarked on a fluorescent career intertwined with teaching, governance, and politics, he saw it all fall apart due to his indiscipline. The most scandalous of all was the Sofidel Hotel case during which DSK lost credibility, dignity, and confidence. He was simply removed from his position as managing director of the IMF, a post he had held for four years. A favorite during the 2012 presidential election campaign, his candidacy was simply suspended and he was sidelined from government affairs in France. Nevertheless, the man brimming with business acumen was able to reconvert to the private sector. Having initially tried banking without success, DSK moved into the field of financial advice to foreign governments, where he is currently enjoying unprecedented success with his consultancy firm based in Morocco, Africa. However, we believe that DSK's life would certainly have been different had he not allowed himself to be blinded by his obsession with women. Having been a favorite in the 2012 presidential polls, he would probably have gone down in the history books as president of the Fifth Republic. Si vous avez aimé la vidéo, merci de vous abonner, liker et partager sans oublier d'activer la cloche de notification pour ne pas manquer nos publications. A très bientôt sur Mazael Media, l'information au cœur de l'action.